Hello and a warm welcome to Special Stage, the first in a new series. This episode we take a look at what's coming up in 2011, as well as bringing you a roundup of action from the world of UK Rally and off-road racing last season. Later in the show, the Special Stage team takes a trip to the Isle of Man for the Chris Kelly Memorial Rally and some vital pre-season preparation for some of the stars of the MSA Asphalt Rally Championship. But first, we always like to bring you something new on Special Stage and this year we're delighted to be covering the Kick Energy Pirelli Junior 1000 Rally Championship. The series, aimed at 14 to 16 year olds, gives young drivers a chance to develop their skills both in and out of the car from an earlier age and has already seen a number of drivers record some good results as they make the step up from the junior championship. 2010 Rally First Champion and rising star Ashley Slight made his first four wheel moves right here in a one litre Toyota Yaris. With a choice of 13 rounds, the crews can pick 9 events, with the best 7 scores counting towards their championship points. And in 2010, it was defending champion Cameron Davies who took the championship once again, just beating Chris Ingram in his Citroen C1 who finished in 2nd place overall. Alex Parr Potters rounded off the top three at the end of a hard-fought season in his Nissan Micra, just a few points behind Ingram. The, the whole premise is that they're very cheap, low-powered cars which handle well. Ideal for juniors, actually ideal for seniors as well. And for a junior starting off, they learn the skills of controlling the car without necessarily having a huge bank balance. So how many juniors have you got registered to this championship? Well, I checked up last night because I was expecting this question. We have 35 licence holders as we stand here, but today they've been looking to sign up again, so I think we're going to probably double that this year. And what are the requirements for a junior driver in the championship? Well, that's quite stringent. We can't just let juniors step into rally cars and drive them in the way that we would with adults, otherwise they'd be driving them in the way that adults do, and we don't want to encourage that. They need to compete in three production car auto tests, uh, which is a test of skill at low speed, make sure that they're trained enough to be able to, to drive and control a, a car without necessarily trying it at 80 or 90 miles an hour. They have to complete a bars test, which is a, a motorsports association requirement, and they have to complete a club test, which is a more strict version of the bars test. Uh, that's before they're ever allowed near uh, a stage to actually compete. You can catch up with all the action from the first few rounds of the championship in our show on the 18th of May. Or if you can't wait that long to find out what the Junior Championship is all about, you'll find more information on our website. This year also sees the return of the REIS MSA Asphalt Rally Championship to our lineup. And once again, the series takes on nine challenging and iconic tarmac rallies up and down the country. Last year, it was Get Connected driver Damien Cole who came out on top, with multiple wins throughout the season, and he will be back in 2011 to defend that title in the Ford Focus World Rally car. With two high-profile wins himself in the Mark II Escort, Simon Major rounded off the season with second place in the championship, an unprecedented result given that the Escort is rear-wheel drive and considerably less advanced than the World Rally machinery. Major will also be back so fully expect to see him put some pressure on Cole in 2011. As well as the overall championship, Major will compete in the newly created Millington Escort Challenge. Open to all rear-wheel drive escorts up to 2.5 litre, the challenge follows the nine rounds that make up the Asphalt Championship. Well, the basic idea was to put a little bit back into rallying. Millington's have been um, maintaining and making engines for the last 35 years. 
Um, we've done very nicely out of motorsport. A lot of people have supported us with our engines. And in Ireland, there are a lot of championships that are running, some of them dominated by Millington engines. But over here in England, there's not, not the events. And I thought the, the MSA, this, this Tarmac Championship, is ideal for our type of unit. So it's a little bit of promotion for our business, but also to put a little bit back, because guys keep asking me, could you do something to run our, our cars and engines in? And so I thought, right, well, we'll give it a go. We don't know quite how it will go. A lot of people are interested in it. This financial pressure with the, the World Rally Car owners, they're having difficulty, well, it's justifying spending a lot of money on a World Rally Car. And a Mark II Escort is a nice car that everybody knows, they like the sound of, nice and safe. And so that was the idea. And we'll see how it goes. And once again, Special Stage will have coverage of the Britpart MSA British Cross Country Championship. With some new venues scheduled for this season, it looks set once again to give us a level playing field for returning competitors and newcomers alike. So, and as coordinator of the British Cross Country Championship, could you tell me of any new improvements we can hope to see in 2011? Yes, um, we're very, very good. Proud to still be involved with uh, Britpart who are sponsoring us again next year. And uh, that association works really, really well. Um, we've got a nice lot of new venues this year as well. Um, uh, moving into what we call the eco-friendly areas, if we can, to make sure of that, which we want to try and do. And also we've got some, the Freelander Challenge, which uh, again, we're going to separate in one area. We're going to have a special day at Baskerville Hall in Mid Wales, where we'll be just running a uh, Freelander Challenge, so if anybody wants to come and have a look at them, have a ride round in one to try it out, it'll be something different, but it looks like the main thing is the Bipar British Championship again, which looks on, on form to be in a good one again. Last year saw a number of new competitors sign up for the championship, and it was definitely a shake-up for the regulars who had things far from their own way. With some being pushed to their limits, and others a little bit beyond. But it was Tim Dilworth who eventually took the championship win at the end of six difficult events. Tim, you won the championship last year. Will you be back again this year? Yes, yeah, we're hoping to uh, we'll be out for the first event if the car get we get the car ready after the uh, winter mods. So uh, yeah, we'll come and have a see if we can defend it for a bit. So what modifications have you made to the car over the winter? We've uh, lowered the engine down, which lowers the centre of gravity, hopefully make it handle a bit better. And then uh, we've uh, changed the turbo and stuff like that. So just a few, a few little mods to try and make it a bit better. So aim for 2011 to win the championship again? Yeah, well, you, you never know what your look, look of the drawer is, do you? It, uh, it changes. It's all about, all about reliability, the championship. So it's just trying to make the car bulletproof so it'll finish every event. And have you got any favourite events you're particularly looking forward to? Yeah, well, Sweet, Sweet Lamb's always my favourite. We always go well there. And uh, Scotland's a bit of a trek up there, but uh, it's a bit rough. So I don't know. And there's a few new events in there, so we don't know what's coming up yet. We'll wait and see what the new, new stages are like and see how they go. Look out for our coverage of this exciting championship beginning in May. You can find all the dates on our website. Although it may seem like a male-dominated sport, rallying does have its fair share of women on hand to add a touch of class and sometimes show the boys how it's done. But we at Special Stage want to encourage more women to get involved, and there are plenty of ways you can do that. I'm a driver, but women also get involved in other aspects of rallying. For example, co-driving. They keep us drivers in the right place, at the right time, and most importantly, keep us in the right direction. Marshals and radio safety is another aspect where women get involved in the sport. Marshals and radio crews are responsible for the safety of the both competitors and the spectators throughout the stage. You'll find them at the beginning of the stage, the end of the stage, and also all the way through. Women are also involved in rescue and recovery. A medical rescue unit is required in every single rally stage to be able to run. They're there to go and help out any competitors that are involved in an accident. 
Recovery units are also involved in each rally stage and they're there to go and extract the car if, in case of any accident or breakdown. As well as driving, I like to get involved in the preparation of the car. I've learnt about suspension, setups, mechanical side of things. This also helps me on stage because if I have any problems, I'm able to have more of an idea of the basics of what might be going wrong and what I can tell my mechanics to try and fix the problem at service. And it's not just the likes of Rally First and 1400s where women can mix it with the boys, as Sarah Williams has shown recently with an excellent string of results, including her second overall on last season's Coral Cup stages. So next time you think it's a man's game, think again. Keep an eye out for us girls. For most rally fans, two main events spring to mind when it comes to rallying on the Isle of Man. But in addition to the national event in May, which you can catch right here on Special Stage, and the international rally in October, the island also has its own championship. And with spectacular action, fierce competition, and of course those famous Manx lanes, these rallies deserve every bit the attention given to their more famous counterparts. Hold on to the edge of your seat as Special Stage visits the island for the Man Construction sponsored Chris Kelly Memorial Rally. With almost 85 miles of closed road rallying over two days, let's jump straight in with a look at the action from day one. Six stages made up the Friday evening loop. Three stages each run twice with a service in between. And it was number one seed and winner of last year's PokerStars rally, Dave Patterson, who opened up an early lead. That lead only eight seconds after the first stage, but opening up to over a minute by the end of the first day. Andrew Lees and Graham Farha finished the first day in fourth overall. A stall on this junction costing the pair a few seconds, but they soon made that back and climbed into second place at the end of day one. Martin Jones and David Radcliffe make a good steady start to the event, settling into third place from the start and keeping that place for the rest of the night. Poor conditions here causing some slower times than you would have expected, but that was the same for everyone. Nigel and Imogen Cannell set the second fastest time on the opening stage. Good going for the pair as this was Imogen's first time in the hot seat, a present for her 16th birthday, but the look would change on stage two when a puncture saw the pair lose valuable time, eventually dropping them down to fourth by the end of the night. Quickest of the two-wheel drive crews on the Friday evening stages were Stuart Eggleston and Brian Hodgson, the Astra coping well in the terrible conditions the slippery roads levelling things somewhat and allowing the underpowered car to climb up to fifth place. A small steering problem caused by a heavy impact, the only scare for the crew. Putting in a late entry to the event was 2010 Manx champion Connor Corkill, alongside Mark Perryman. But this being the first time the pair had sat together meant a cautious start in the treacherous conditions. Tenth fastest on the first stage, but pulling back some time to settle into sixth Four place left. at the end of the day. Right over crest, tidy, Titans, 200, over dip. Another late entry from Dan Harper and Paula Swinsco in the BMW Mini, and another cautious start in the bad conditions. The pair dropping down the order a little on stage two, but making their way back up to seventh after stage six. Out for a test ahead of the MSA Asphalt Rally Championship, John Stone and Rob Fagg couldn't seem to get to grips with the car on the wet stages. And that was reflected in the times, though 8th overall was still good going in these conditions and against local crews. First time out in a new car, and furthermore their first experience of four-wheel drive turbo power for Sean Kelly and Will Rand. Ninth overall at the end of day one, the debut was going well so far. And rounding off the top 10 at the end of the day's six tricky stages were Tim Collins and Paul McCann, a solid improvement on their 16th fastest time posted on the opening stage. Leading the other classes outside the top 10 were Adrian Commode and Morris Beckett, the only historic entry but going well in 13th overall. Gary Edgington and Pete Johnson were leading the Class B runners home in the Peugeot 106. 
The tricky conditions were causing no end of problems out on the Manx stages. When the fog wasn't slowing the cars down, the standing water was catching them out. One crew to have a lucky escape were Richard and Andy Barnard in the Impreza. This section on stage four, sending the car spinning down the stage. No damage, but the car was stuck, dropping them down from 27th place to the bottom of the results. No, can we get anything? No. Retirements on the first day included Kex Walker and Daniel Matthews in the BMW. They would restart, however, on Saturday after fixing the problem overnight, but were now out of the running. Ian Jones and Estin Williams would retire on stage three when they rolled their Citroen C2 out of the event in dramatic fashion. Meanwhile, escort pair Hugh Jones and Leon Williams retire with alternator problems. Matt Davidson and Tash Ellison end their event in more spectacular fashion again with an off-road excursion on stage two. Seen here from on board with Richard Barnard. You okay? Okay, Go, keep going. Two left, one right. So this is how the leaderboard looks at the end of day one. So after a night of rest and time for reflection on a difficult day, the crews have a further 12 stages to go on Saturday. But before we move over to that action, here's what some of the drivers had to say about the event so far. Well, Dave, everyone else was having their dramas last night, but it didn't seem a bother to you. <laughs> no, I was having plenty of dramas, believe me. Um, we went with a plan, have a look at them all. Um, I don't mind the wet at all. Uh, the fog, complete nightmare. Um, so we just had a look at it all and I'm amazed, you know, if I had to have a minute lead, if I had to be honest, but... Yeah, have a look at it all. On those first three coming into first service, you were 30 seconds up. That's some luck. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, I think... I think with me, I haven't got a lot of difference between when it's wet and dry pace, personally. I do like it wet, but, you know, I purposely wanted to have a look first. Um, but I know... All, all the others had issues as well, so... Any particular dramas for you? For the end, the end of the, the first stage, just I, I complained off. We went down the grass for a couple of hundred yards, um, but apart from that, it was OK. That was only 19 stage miles last night, 65 today, so a minute and two might seem like a big lead, but it's quite a lot of mileage in this, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do the same thing. Um, we've got a luxury of a minute, so all these stages I've never done before. So, same thing, we'll go and have a look. If we, if we drop time, we know we can have a bit of a push, so it's OK. You happy that it's dry or would you rather it was still wet? Um, it, don't, it don't really bother me. Um, I'd say the main problem this morning is, is going to be the fog again um, up, up the top. Oh, hopefully that'll lift um, and then we should be OK. Wild old night last night. How was it for you? Yeah, um, the only thing you can say is the same for everybody. I've drove in some conditions, but last night was probably equal to the worst I've ever done. Like. Some experience in that car, but having said that, a lot of experience on your side. You've got your daughter in with you for the first time, just 16 years old, the first ever rally. That was an introduction, wasn't it? It certainly was. I mean, you know yourself starting off on pace notes and then in the fog as well. It was just incredible for her, really, with the mud and the wet. And yeah, Once we got into like the last two stages, she got the hang of it a bit more, but the first few, it was blind, really. So in that sense, even more impressive that you were in and around the top three all night. Yeah, I don't think it was impressive. I think it was a case of being sensible and smooth, really, is what I was trying to be. But the puncture on the second stage, sort of, I lost my head after that a bit, really. So. And yet you're still right there in contention. It's very tight after take Dave Patterson out of it. And there's only sort of seconds between everybody, isn't there? It'd be nice to take Dave Patterson out of it, wouldn't it? Not literally, but yeah. Uh, yeah, but we're going to push today. Like the first few, we'll give a push and see whether we can scare Dave. Maybe he'll be asleep this morning, I don't know. Big attack? Yeah, well, you've got to, haven't you? You can't let somebody come over here and take the home event. Well, John, a fraught opening night. Uh, yeah, just a bit. It's, um, it was just about getting through last night, really. It was uh, terrible conditions. Only 19 stage miles, but you had your fair share of dramas. Yeah, we, uh, we had uh, an off on the first stage, um, more or less the, probably about the third corner or something like that. Um, and then we had quite a big one on, uh, on the third stage and just lost all confidence, really. So uh, just decided to trumble it through and uh, pick up the pieces today if we could. Conditions absolutely horrendous, weren't they? 
Yeah, it's the same for everybody. Um, I mean, Dave Patterson went fantastically well last night. Um, he must have been, you know, pushing a bit, really, to be fair to the lad. Um, but uh, it's all about seat time for us, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can have a decent run today and, uh, and get ready for a tour of Epping. Yeah, you'll be happier to have woken up this morning to see the blue skies compared with last night's teeming rain. Yeah, it was a bit of mist on those hills, though, isn't there? You know? So that was the problem last night, you just couldn't see anything. So what's the plan for today? Uh, just try and enjoy it, really. Um, that's the thing, try and try and get back up to a decent position. Uh, usual case for us is sort of have a rubbish first day and then uh, try and catch up the day after. But, uh, yeah, just to, just to get a bit of mileage and uh, enjoy it. Literally that first round of the Tarmac Championship only a few weeks away now must be starting to build in the mind. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of winding up going on on the forums and uh, the telephone calls and things like that, so we're all looking forward to it, yeah. yeah. Today, just part of the plan? Absolutely, yeah. Stuart, some pace you were setting last night in the Astra. Yeah, I mean, it didn't feel like it. It was just a case of picking your best way through it, really. I mean, the, the water out there was horrendous. And then stage three, the fog. I mean, that was very interesting. Uh, nearly kissed a few bankings. But uh, we also, on the, the triangle, um, it's a very severe ridge. And we knocked the steering wheel completely out. And I was worried to the end, thinking that it had broken something. But uh, no, the car was fine, so... It, um, you know, it's just been the same for everybody and it's very difficult to see the, the water on the roads. So you'd be more than happy to see yourself as the leading two-wheel driver then? Well, I can't believe it to be quite honest, you know, I mean, it, you just felt to be going so slowly, but obviously it's the same for everyone and uh, maybe with me having a power disadvantage was an, uh, an advantage last night, so different story today though. Yeah, going to be bright sunshine hopefully today and nice dry roads for you. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, again, it'd be a disadvantage for me with lack of power. Some of the, the Mini and uh, Connor and his Escort, you know, they're uh, well, quite a lot more power than me. So, But, you know, it's a long way to go yet. Anything can happen. Continuing their day one dominance of the event, Dave Patterson and Paul Whittaker edged out an even bigger margin over the morning loop of stages. Nigel and Imogen Cannell were rightly looking forward to the morning stages, with Druidale being one that Nigel knows well. So much so that he managed to post the fastest time on the first run of the stage. Unfortunately, the wrong tyre choice on the second run of the stage slowed progress slightly, but this effort's still enough for a second fastest time, moving the pair up to second overall on the leaderboard. Andrew Lees and Graham Farha dropped down a place from second into third. Power steering problems are the cause of this time loss, but with the cars due into service now, there's a chance to fix the problem before heading back out in anger to make up some of that lost time. Martin Jones and David Radcliffe had dropped down slightly from their overnight position, now in fourth place. The only real drama coming in the form of a puncture towards the end of stage nine. But it doesn't lose them any time. A stroke of luck on these fast, tricky stages one puncture can potentially turn the leaderboard on its head. Connor Corkill and Mark Perryman keep it clean and tidy in the escort to climb a place from an overnight sixth into fifth position. The new pairing showing early promise. Stay right, break late, into one left over bridge. And one right. 40. Six left over crest, a tight hairpin left. 40. Tight hairpin right. Slippy. Six left, 150 up the middle. To six right and five left over crest. Six right, five left over crest. 40 caution, three left. Bump. Also getting quicker as the day went on were John Stone and Rob Fagg in sixth place. The drying conditions suiting the Fabia World Rally car more than Friday stages. Now posting top 10 stage times, including third fastest on the second run through Dewydale, it was looking good for the tarmac travellers from the mainland. Stuart Eggleston and Brian Hodgson remained in the lead of the front-wheel drive crews in seventh overall. 
though they had dropped a few places now as the faster stages highlighted the car's power disadvantage a little more. Bad luck for Dan Harper and Paula Swinsco as they drop down from 5th to 8th when a problem with the gearbox slows progress on stage 9. Thankfully they get back to service and manage to repair the car in order to continue the rally. Sean Kelly and Will Rand have a consistent morning in the Evo, getting some valuable seat time in the car and managing to set some fast times. They remain in ninth place. Andrew Holmes and Stephen Fox jump up into the top 10 now after being in 11th overnight. They spend a brief spell in 9th place but settle into 10th at the end of this loop of stages. The long two right, two left. Go on, keep it on. 100, the road sign. Go on, Andrew. 70, the grid left. Flat out, come on. Fast as she'll go. One right to finish. Don't lift, keep it on. Don't lift, keep it on. No. Well done. Adrian Commode and Morris Beckett gain a couple of places and move up into 11th. They may not have another historic crew to battle with for class honours this weekend, but they still have to get to the finish. Gary Edgington and Pete Johnson still lead Class B, 13th overall in the Peugeot 106, while Ian and Greg Davison are second in the class, down in 32nd overall. David Jones and Andrew Cowley hold their lead in Class A with 16th overall while Chris and Heidi Woodcock lie second in Class A. A couple of places back, but still pushing. Overnight 10th place Tim Collins and Paul McCann unfortunately see an early end to their rally, retiring on stage eight with turbo problems. Andrew Bird and Richard Cullen also retire from 11th place on stage eight in the Chevette. They had been up as high as eighth at the start of day one. Pepe Planita and Seb Turner were another crew to halt their charge on stage 8, the drive shaft on the car breaking on the Druidale stage. Glyn Parry and Anton Cashin rolled their way out of the event on the Druidale stage, just out of view of our cameras. The crew were okay, which is more than can be said for the car. The accident signalling the end of their event, the pair having been lying 15th at the start of the day. Jason Daly and Mark Brew finish off the list of retirements on this loop when the Swift's drive shaft calls it a day, a frustrating end to their event. So after four stages on day two, this is how the results look. On to the middle loop of the day now and Dave Patterson and Paul Whitaker remain in a strong position out in front, consistently posting fastest stage times Midway through this second day, Dave, and it's all going very smoothly. The lead up over a minute and a half now. Yeah, it's going okay. Yeah, uh, we just took it easy away for the first two, and then just had a bit of an attack on the on on the next two once we got to know them a bit. Um, and this, and just done the same thing with this one really. Just have a look first of all. Is it dry in there? It's more dry than it is wet. There's just a horrible bit in the in the middle where there's a lot of water and a lot of mud, which is why I went on an interstroke wet just to have a look. Um, no moments though. Uh, no, no, not really. Just having a look first of all. Just keep that pace to the end. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nigel and Imogen Cannell were also posting some good times, keeping close to the times set by Patterson and holding off those behind them to remain in second place. Nigel, it's going well. Yeah, Martin's only two seconds behind though, so uh, I think we're pushing hard on him. That was a good stage, that, but bloody fast. We're hearing it's very mixed conditions in there as well. Yeah, you, you were really committed to a corner. You just brush right out on the other side, like flat in fifth, quite hairy. <laughs> Good experience for this one, though. Don't think she's noticed yet. <laughs> with the power steering problem now fixed, Andrew Lees and Graham Farha could get on with a push to claw back second place from Kennel. Or so they thought. More pushing needed, they would have to settle for third place for now. Well, Andy, big dramas at service just. Did you manage to get it sorted? Yeah, we did, yeah. We just uh, had a union come and done on the power steering pipe, so 
fought through Druidale with no power steer and then uh, had a good run through there. Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah. We think it's probably cost you second place to Nigel Cannell for the moment. You're going to get that back? Well, he's a wily old character. I might have him, but uh, through there it was very slippy as well. Probably on the wrong tyres, but we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, thanks, Andy. No change from Martin Jones and David Radcliffe in the Evo. They remain in fourth place. Well, Martin, there's a big chase on for second here behind Patterson. You're right in the mix. How's it going? Uh, not too bad. Just trying to get me confidence up and that. It's taking a while to get into all this. and Not as quick as I normally am, I don't think. So, just try and get on it. Connor Corkill and Mark Perryman continued at a good pace to keep their fifth position and remain in the lead two-wheel drive crew. Well, Connor, it was all frowns last night on that first loop in the appalling weather, but it smiles now. Oh, yes, definitely. It's, um, it's uh, fantastic weather for rallying right now, definitely. And you like the mixed conditions in there, get the back end stuck out on this thing? That's it, exactly. Give the spectators something to see, eh? And on the leaderboard, you're not doing too badly at all now? No, we're doing all right, hanging around the top five area, so we've still got a WRC behind us, so, <laughs> you know, I'm happy. I'm definitely happy. Making up some time, meanwhile, John Stone and Rob Fagg managed to equal Corkill's overall time to land themselves in joint fifth overall. Well, John, are you happier with your pace today? Uh, it's getting better, yeah. We were on the wrong tyres for that one, really, but, yeah, it's it, OK, yeah. What are you on in there, slicks? You're on slicks, yeah. And it's very mixed. Yeah, yeah, we should have been on inters, I think. So Drew down and Faulty Will were all right this morning. Sorry? Drew down and Faulty Will. Yeah, okay. we spot on. The right choice for that, yeah. So yeah. You get a bit more confidence now. Yeah, a bit more confidence now. Just keep building. Stuart Eggleston and Brian Hodgson hold on to the Class C lead in seventh overall. Well, Stuart, keeping the pace up today. Yeah, we're, uh, we've got the car sorted in the service area, we had a steering problem, um, the steering rack was moving and uh, the, also the tracking was a long way out, so we had excessive steering on the first four, but the car feels a lot better in there, definitely. Particularly big moment on that last one before service, you were saying? Yes, we are, just going up a straight, uh, uphill in fact, and uh, running water, and it, the car just stopped completely sideways, and it was uh, single track road, pretty hairy. But this one's a lot better? A lot better now, yeah. yeah. Andrew Holmes and Stephen Fox in the similar car remain second in Class C and eighth overall. Two minutes behind Eggleston now. How's it going? Good. Uh, I won't be taking the Len Bridge quite as quick next time. <laughs> we had quite a bit of uh, rear movement in that, but that was, that was good. Uh, the, the roads are drying out. The little West Craig loop is, is bad, but uh, a good stage. Enjoying it. Getting on it now. Can't, can't keep with that Eggleston bloke, he's mega fast. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Sean Kelly and Will Rand were getting used to the Evo now, getting visibly quicker too, and enjoying the more open stages today. Still ninth overall for the pair. Well, Sean, first time out in a big four wheel drive turbo car. How's it going? Yeah, not too bad. Just uh, getting used to the speed and the pace. It's just uh, a lot more than a two litre Corsa. But uh, it's a bigger car to manhandle around them uh, cones as well. Yeah, last night a bit of a, a trial of our dramas in the in the weather, but today must be a bit better. Oh, it's a lot better, yeah. Yeah, I can actually feel the car now, and it's it's pretty good. Yeah. It's just a case of getting used to it, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, get it home. <laughs> Adrian Commode and Morris Beckett move up a place into tenth now, and are clearly having fun on the wide open Manx corners. Adrian, Hi. back on the island again, back on your home roads. How's it going? It's going great, yeah, we're, we're doing all right. We're breaking a bit too early in a few places because you just don't know how, how much grip you're going to get coming into the corners, you know, and the one you take the chance is the one you end up overshooting or hitting something, but um, otherwise we're just having a great time, yeah. And you're lower down than everyone else. The impression of speed must be immense. <laughs> well, something like that, you could say that. Still leading Class B at the end of this loop are Gary Edgington and Pete Johnson in the 106, now 13th overall. 15th overall and leading Class A were David Jones and Andrew Cowley. Walter Bridson and Stephen Christian retired on stage 12 when the gearbox failed in the Corsa. They had been climbing their way into the top 20 all morning, so a sad end to their efforts. 
Ian and Greg Davidson's event also came to an abrupt end on stage 11, with an accident close to the start of the stage. The car definitely looking second hand now. Dan Harper and Paula Swinsco also retire with an accident of their own on stage 12, after being in 8th place. A disappointing end after the work to keep the car going in the previous service. So with just 5 stages remaining, this is how the top 10 is shaping up. So as this rally becomes a battle of attrition, the crews fight just to stay on the road. And with the end of the event in sight, let's take a look now at how the class battles were decided. In class A, it would be Cathy and Janet Crane who would take third place in the Vauxhall Corsa. David Jones and Andrew Cowley had a disappointing finish. They received a time penalty for an early arrival, which cost them the class win. Still, second in class is a good result. But picking up the win in class A were Chris and Heidi Woodcock in the Proton finishing 16th overall and with a 38 second lead in hand. Well Chris, we're used to seeing you in uh, Mitsubishi Evos but a drop down to the 1400 class has netted your class win. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a change of uh, heart and uh, see if I've got a car that I can actually drive now instead of it driving me. Absolutely, you've got to drive on the door handles have you? Yeah, well it's, it's been good fun, I've really enjoyed it. I haven't enjoyed the rally for as much for maybe five years now. Yeah, definitely the way to go, front wheel drive. Any big moments? No, not really. No, not even not even any sort of entries into ditches or anything like that. It was just just a really nice, clean, fun run. Well, maybe I should ask Heidi, has it really been a clean, fun run? Oh, definitely. Absolutely wonderful. It's been brilliant. Really, really good. Really, really well put on. Good, good events as well. It's been superb. Really, really good. You're telling me he's listened to the notes all the way through? <laughs> yeah, too much, actually. <laughs> I picked up all my mistakes. <laughs> You're always coming back here. You'll be back again, won't you? Oh, yeah, we're back in July for Porker Stars. Yeah. Well done, both of you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Only one finisher in Class B means that Gary Edgington and Pete Johnson take the victory. Also good enough for 12th overall in the little Peugeot 106. In Class C for the front-wheel drive cars, it would be a Vauxhall Astra 123, with third place going to Tim Healy and Rob Jackson in the older example. Some way off the pace of the top two in the class. Second in class, and just missing out on a top 10 finish in 11th place, were Andrew Holmes and Stephen Fox. Three left, 20, to four right, wet. Watch your surface. Three left, three right, wet. Long four right. 50, to house, three right. Two left, two right. Winners of the class though, and showing their dominance throughout the event, were Stuart Eggleston and Brian Hodgson. Not only taking the class win, but also sixth overall on the leaderboard. Well Stuart, you were telling us it's been 1998 since you've been on some of these stages. Uh, the memories must have been okay though, because you've won the class. Yeah, we've had a good run today, well even last night as well. Uh, a couple of small problems this morning with the steering. Um, we've got that rectified in service and uh, the only problem is with it drying out today um, we've been at a disadvantage with the power but uh, uh, we've just done our own rally really and done what we could and thoroughly enjoyed it as well. Fair to say that that small problem with the steering wasn't quite such a small issue on Drewdale, it was quite a moment. We had an awful big moment, yeah, we were almost completely sideways and uh, it was just steering left to right through most of the stage and yeah, it was uh, certainly uh, almost an arm pump at the end of it. And this is your sort of second visit in a few months to the Isle of Man. You've sort of reacquainted yourself with Manx Tarlac now, haven't you? I love the Isle of Man. I mean, I always did when I competed over here. You, you just, uh, to be honest, it's the best tarmac rally in, you can get um, in the British Isles. And um, I would daily love to come back for the Manx National, but we'll just have to see how things go, really. OK, well, well done this weekend, anyway. Thank you. For the rear-wheel drive crews in Class D, it would be Ted Sale and Chris Kane in the Escort, taking the final step on the podium. Third in class and 21st overall. David and John Coulson in the BMW finished second in class and 13th overall. 
A good result for the pair after a clean run all weekend. But winners of the class, and also walking away with an impressive fifth overall, were Connor Corkill and Mark Perryman in the Escort, holding at bay a number of chasing four-wheel drive crews in the process. Well, Connor Corkill reigning Manx champion, and this is the first round of this year's championship. Obviously a top five finish, uh, a good result, and a class win. Yeah, it was, it was great. Last night I thought it was going to be an absolute nightmare of a rally with the, with the fog and the rain, but today's brightened up, but lovely, and uh, some real good competition with some quick lads over here. It's great. Fair to say you really struggled last night on the first loop particularly. Oh yeah, definitely. We just couldn't get into a rhythm, it was, and with the new co-driver as well, it was, it was absolute havoc, but uh, pulled it together on the second loop last night, and today we've just been hooning about, so fantastic. Putting on a show for the Speckies this afternoon. Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, uh, a good run now that sets you up for the rest of the year. Well, yeah, it, it doesn't look like we're going to be doing a heck of a lot this year. Uh, maybe a couple of events here and there, but uh, but this will set us up for Rally Alaman, definitely. On to the overall results now, and rounding off the top ten was Sean Kelly and Will Rand. Turbo boost problems on stage 14, causing them to lose some time and drop down to tenth place. Still a good finish, however, and enough for fourth in Class E. Andrew Sherrington and Bradley Johnson make a final push and climb into the top of the results on the final loop to take ninth overall, while also collecting third in Class E in their older model Evo. A good clean eighth overall for Adrian Commode and Morris Beckett, the only crew in the historics, so they take the class win. And with Dan Harper now out of the running, it will be John and Martin Cressy who take a result for Minisport. Seventh overall and second in Class E. Class B winners and sixth overall were Stuart Eggleston and Brian Hodgson in the Astra. Connor Corkill and Mark Perryman are the leading two-wheel drive crew home in the Escort. Fifth overall and winners of Class D. Martin Jones and David Radcliffe miss out on a podium place by just 10 seconds at the end of the event. Still a good start to the season though, and enough to bag them second in the Manx Championship, as well as first in class here today. Jones' fourth place was due in part to Andrew Lease and Graham Farhouse's retirement on the penultimate stage of the event, reporting differential problems. A disappointing end to what looked like being a strong rally for the pair. A good test ahead of the new MSA asphalt season for John Stone and Rob Fagg, they come back from a slow start and take some silverware home to polish. Third overall, a good result for Stone in the Fabia at the end of a gruelling pre-season friendly. Well John, you came here as a bit of sort of pre-season practice and that's exactly what you've done. Yeah, it's been good actually, uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, first two stages this morning and last night were, were awful really, but uh, really enjoyed the rest of the day. Never been on those stages this afternoon, um, but enjoyable, yeah. Very quick stages, those ones this afternoon, weren't they? Yeah, uh, yeah, big, brave stages, really. But uh, I, hope I hope they're used on the Manx National. It'd be nice that to uh, sort of have a bit of experience on them. But uh, no, looking, com looking forward to coming back in uh, in May. Absolutely, that's the main target this year, isn't it? The uh, the MSA Asphalt Championship. Yep, uh, kicks off in a few weeks on uh, on Epint, and uh, looking forward to that. Um, can't wait to, uh, to meet up with uh, Damien uh, again and uh, looking forward to it. And Dave, the winner here this weekend, is going to throw himself into the mix as well, apparently. Yeah, well, Dave's gone very well today. I've been very impressed with his pace today. But, uh, yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. Nigel and Imogen Cannell score a fantastic result with second overall. A great result for Imogen on her competitive debut in the car and alongside her father. Well, Nigel Cannell. Uh, second place, a really good start to your year. Yeah, it's a good enough start, yeah, well happy with that. No major dramas? 
No, a few big moments. Um, puncture last night sort of put a bit of a down on it, but it didn't really cost me that much time looking at it. And uh, Dave certainly had it in the bag from last night. Absolutely. Last night was where it was won and lost, wasn't it? Yeah, I think he demoralised us all the bugger. <laughs> we were uh, told from government to back off so that we got more English boys winning. Anyways, we get more English boys coming over to the rally, so that's my excuse anyway. And also, uh, Dave's not quite got the looks to lose if I had an accident, has he? <laughs> or, my, or my daughter sat in with me. <laughs> yeah, tell us about Imogen, how she got on. For, obviously, just turned 16, first time out in a rally. Yeah, um, last night was obviously a struggle with all the rain and the mist and the mud and everything else was real, real struggle. But she wasn't too bad, but today, the more it's gone on, the uh, more a mother could be uh, looking for another seat. <laughs> <laughs> and you're rolling on what next to the national maybe? Yeah, yeah, definitely out in the national. The car's definitely more sorted for this rally than it has been since I've had it. So uh, hopefully get a good clean run in that. And if Dave's coming over, maybe give him a bit more of a run in that. But winning the event by over three minutes were Dave Patterson and Paul Whitaker. Clearly, the pair will be a force to be reckoned with in the upcoming REIS Asphalt Rally Championship, which includes a trip back to the island roads in May for the Manx National Rally. Well, Dave, that's been uh, a long old rally, but uh, you're back here with a two-plus minute win, so it's been fairly comfortable, really. At the end, yeah. Um, after last night, um, and it was quite bad, I've got to say. I uh, wasn't enjoying it at all, but it's the same for everybody. Um, today, we had a look at all the stages, and uh, yeah, it was, it was good. It turned out good. It was last night that set it up, wasn't it? Because even some of the top local drivers have been saying that they were the worst conditions they've ever driven a rally in. So for you to build up a minute-plus lead last night was uh, really where you broke the back of it. I think so, yeah, yeah. You know, like in all the rallies I've done in Europe and everything, that is by far the worst conditions I've ever seen. Um, I, the actual wet is okay, I don't mind that. When you can't see, it's, it's just sort of dangerous, really. But then today, I thought they might come back at me, you know, so I've been having a go, but not going crackers. <laughs> <laughs> and a few scary moments along the way? Only one last night, none today. Just keeping it on the all four today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because like, we're only testing here for the Manx, you know, like, like, I'm thinking the bigger picture. I want, a, I want a result on the Manx National, so we're just here testing, shall we say. And for a, a, a possible start, at least, to the uh, MSA National Asphalt Championship. Yeah, uh, so that yeah. sort of sets you up nicely for that in a few weeks' time. Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. You know, we're going to start, start it, go over tapping. I've been epping a couple of times, so completely different roles here, of course. Um, but yeah, it'll be OK. And then really looking forward to getting back here in May for the, for the National. Yeah, the Manx National is the one I want a result on, so uh, I want to... Have a go at Mr. Birds, apparently he doesn't, he says like there's no competition, so uh, he'll, you know, like, I think we can give him some. <laughs> <laughs> and in the meantime, anyway, it's back to back wins here on Manx Tarmac, which is quite a thing to have on your rally and CV, regardless. Yeah, it is, yeah, 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 you know, like my dad did it, he won the Manx National in the 80s, so to have like the two results here in, you know, the one at the end of last year, the one this and now is, is good, yeah, yeah. Top job, well done. Thank you. And here's confirmation of the final results. So once again we've kicked the season off in style here on Special Stage. And as we warm up ready for some of the UK's top rally and off-road racing championships to start, we hope you'll join us as we take in the BTRDA season opener, the Team GMS Wydean Forest Rally next time here on Motors TV. Thanks for watching. Jesus.